Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Larry Cretion, and I'm the Executive Director of Green Energy Consumers Alliance. Uh, welcome to this um, webinar on decarbonizing your home and transportation. We're hoping to give you some practical tips and ideas on where you can get financial support for heat pumps and clean electricity, electric vehicles, and more. Um, I'm going to turn it over now to Ken Pruitt of the Town of Winchester. Great, thanks, Larry. And uh, so I'm the Sustainability Director for the Town of Winchester. And this webinar is part of Winchester's Climate Solutions Week, a series of 20 events that started yesterday and will run through next Sunday, October 2nd. Yes, there are solutions to climate change and they're available right now, as you'll learn today. I wanna thank the Green Energy Consumers Alliance for agreeing to put on this webinar as part of our Climate Solutions Week. Some of the most important climate solutions must be undertaken in our homes and in the ways we get around. In other words, transportation. Larry Creation, Executive Director of the Green Energy Consumers Alliance, is our speaker today, and I'll be also available if people have specific questions about uh, the work we're doing in Winchester. A little bit more about Larry. For 23 years, he has been the Executive Director of Green Energy Consumers Alliance which is a nonprofit based in Boston and Providence, whose mission is to harness the power of consumers to accelerate the transition to a zero carbon economy. Green, Green Energy Consumers does it through advocacy and offering consumers solutions with renewable energy, energy efficiency, and electric, vehicle, electric vehicles. Larry's home, office, phone, and car are all powered by the wind. I also want to mention that Green Energy Consumers Alliance and the town of Winchester have an important relationship outside of this webinar. Uh, Green Energy Consumers is responsible for supplying the renewable energy for Winchester's Wind Power Community Electricity Program, which provides more renewable energy in our electricity supply and actually does so at a lower cost than customers who just purchase Eversource Basic. So we're saving money here in Winchester and helping the climate and Larry will tell you more about, uh, about that program during his talk today. So thank you, Larry, and take it away. Thank you, Ken. Um, so we'll get started, and I hope you enjoy this um, more than the Patriots game. It looks like they are heading down to defeat uh, as we speak. Uh, maybe we'll get more attendees when the game is officially over. Um, so First, uh, you're all muted, I'm afraid, to avoid background noise, um, but we would love to see your questions. And you can put questions into the GoToWebinar box on your screen. And we'll answer questions uh, actually at the end, but also uh, there are three sections to the presentation. So after each section, we might take a couple of uh, questions, but we'll try to stay on schedule. And after this, uh, we will share the slides and recording after the webinar. Adriana, if you could remind me, we'll get that email out uh, within a couple of days to everybody. If you registered, um, you'll receive that soon. Uh, so Green Energy Consumers Alliance, we're a nonprofit organization based in uh, Boston and, and Providence, and we're serving both states of Massachusetts and Rhode Island. And our mission is to harness the power of consumers to speed the transition to a zero carbon future. Uh, I am uh, the executive director. Uh, today, we'll talk about clean heat for your home. Uh, we'll talk about drive green, uh, meaning electric vehicles, and how to choose clean electricity. Those are the three ways to decarbonize your home. To pick up on what Ken said, um, we've had some great uh, results in the last uh, several months. Massachusetts passed another great climate bill uh, in uh, late July. And then in August, uh, President Biden signed the Inflation Reduction Act, which uh, had a major uh, climate action component. It was the largest investment in greenhouse gas reduction that the world has ever seen. Um, those two things are great. However, uh, very little of those two laws are what we would call self-executing. Uh, in order for them to work, people are going to have to uh, take the bait. Uh, homeowners and uh, renters and landlords and businesses are going to have to look to the incentives that are offered to do these things, which is to uh, adopt clean heat and electric vehicles and so forth. Uh, so first, um, how do we uh, have clean heat? Um, so the main method here, we're talking about cold climate air source heat pumps. Um, and there's a gentleman with a Mitsubishi unit outside his home. Um, and so we'll talk about that for a bit. 
Um, what's changed in the last several years is that uh, heat pump technology has gotten so much better. Uh, what you need to look for in our region is what's called a cold climate heat pump. It's, it's made to uh, provide some efficient heat all the way down to minus 15 degrees uh, Fahrenheit. Um, it can completely replace your fossil fuel heating system in most cases, or you can uh, heat or cool part of your home and toggle it on or off with your current heating system. It could supplement or displace at least part of your uh, natural gas or oil or propane. Um, and there, there, there are options that you can look at. Um, what's a, the advantage of it is that there's no combustion in your home to do that. And that uh, when you, right now, if you were to install a heat pump and if you were on the utility basic service that Eversource provides, there would be a huge emissions uh, improvement uh, because uh, the electricity grid is cleaner than people think and because uh, heat pumps are far more efficient than your natural gas or oil heating system. Uh, but if you're in Winchester and you're part of the wind power program, then you can, all, you can go to zero emissions with your heating. Um, now the state has a goal right now for 2022 to 2024 to install about 40,000 heat pumps per year, but we're gonna to need to get that up to 100,000 per year from 2026 through 2050. We're just gonna to have to keep going at a rate of about 100,000 per year in Massachusetts. We have about 2.7 million homes in the state. Um, and so we need to start moving now. Um, we have a greenhouse gas goal in the state of uh, reducing emissions 50% by 2030. So we gotta get that ramp up to 100,000 uh, as fast as possible. Uh, now, heat pumps, to be very honest, can be expensive up front to install and operate. Uh, but uh, it's something you can look at. It will result in significant greenhouse gas reductions. Um, there is complex building science needed to properly design a home. Um, they're a little bit more complicated for your home than perhaps putting solar on the roof, to be honest with you. Uh, but we have the opportunity to get competitive quotes uh, from qualified installers. Our organization has partnered with Abode Energy Management they're building science professionals and they manage programs in Massachusetts and Connecticut. Uh, we've worked with them, we've we recruited installers to the program. Uh, they're highly experienced, they're committed to uh, making heat pumps work. What Abode will do if you go is, is Abode will provide unbiased um, uh, uh, consulting advice, they'll compare the bids you might get from these installers and help you make a choice, answer your technical questions. Uh, they are vendor neutral. They really do not care which installer uh, you would choose. They're unbiased in that respect. Uh, but both Green Energy Consumers and Abode are hoping that you'll at least take a look at it um, and they'll help you uh, look at the comparisons apples to apples. So if you're interested in our program, it's greenenergyconsumers.org slash abode and you can uh, learn more about that. Um, Lily Hayes works for us and she's our liaison to abode energy management. Um, but we've decided that to, in order to serve a large volume of folks, we need to go to an expert like abode and um, we're having some good results. And so you, you can go to them. Uh, you, they have a couple of different options. You can pay them to compare your bids or they can, uh, you can uh, a very modest fee or you can pay them to give you advice before you go out to bid. So you have a sense of what to look for. Um, so we, we suggest that you take their advice because a little bit that you'd pay them would uh, yield a very high rate of return uh, because what we're seeing in the, in the, uh, among the bids so far has been a wide variation in pricing and also in uh, the configuration. Um, so it's helpful to get technical support from abode energy management on that. Um, Heat pumps, there's a lot of incentives through the Mass Save program that are available to folks in Winchester. You can get uh, a partial home uh, rebate of up to $10,000 for heat pumps, and it's based upon the size of the system. Uh, they basically allocate the rebate, uh, it's, it's $1,250 per ton of heating capacity, which is um, a, a ton of heating capacity is uh, 10,000 million uh, BTUs. Uh, a whole home, uh, rebate would be $10,000. Uh, it does not require the oil or gas system to be removed, but uh, they do want the heat pump system to be able to meet 100% of your needs. 
in both situations, whether you're partial home or whole home, uh, we, you have to start with a home energy assessment that you would schedule through Mass Save. And then on top of the $10,000 you would potentially get, you can also finance the system with a heat loan. Um, that's a, a special loan you can get through Mass Save. They'll refer you to a, a, a local bank and uh, that's 0% financing. Um, again, those are starting with the home energy assessment, do that as soon as you can. Uh, that's your ticket towards the next step of working with heat pump installers or abode. Um, basically, the reason the assessments there is to, uh, we wanna make sure that your home is well insulated and that there might not be another compelling uh, issue in your home that you should take advantage of before you do the, the heat pump. And so it does make sense uh, to get the home energy assessment uh, first before you can make the major investment towards uh, heat pumps. Now, the Inflation Reduction Act that was signed by President uh, Biden in August is, um, it's a cliche, I'm gonna keep using it, but it's a game changer. Um, uh, from 2022 to 2032, you'll be able to earn uh, tax credits of up to $2,000 for heat pumps. It's, it's a 30% tax credit. So you have to basically spend roughly $6,000 to get $2,000 in a tax credit. But remember, you can that's gonna be coupled uh, with the mass save rebates. There are additional funds you can get for electric wiring upgrades and, and so forth. What's interesting about it is there's no lifetime cap. So you can claim a new energy savings tax credit every year. So you can sort of uh, segment your work. Um, one year, you might wanna get an induction stove uh, and you, uh, you might need to do an electrical upgrade. In my house, for example, we're gonna to have to do that. Um, and then maybe we, the following year we would do heat pumps. Um, so, so scoping out your work is, is important. Um, in 2023, uh, we're expecting uh, Massachusetts to get uh, a big bag of money from the federal government to administer rebates um, to homes that are income qualified. And that is meaning up to 150% of uh, the area median, median income. So what's uh, tricky here is if you're at 150% of, med of area median, median income or less, you would be eligible for very generous re uh, rebates, up to $14,000 per home. I think it's $8,000 for a heat pump, but then there's also money for the electric uh, wiring and the electric panel, the induction stove, heat pump, water heaters, and all that. Um, we strongly recommend that you go to this website, Rewiring America, org and look for their IRA, uh, IRA calculator. They'll ask you, uh, what's your zip code? They want to um, they want to know where you live. They will ask you, do you own the home or do you rent? They'll ask you, how do you file your taxes? Are you a joint filer um, or do you file uh, as a single person or um, what's your status as a, ta as, as a taxpayer? And uh, then they'll ask you uh, to fill out, it's just a calculator. It's not they're not keeping your information. You put in your 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 income, and they will uh, spit out. They'll tell you which rebates or tax credits or both that you'd be eligible for. Uh, we think it's an absolutely great tool. We think it's essential. Uh, one thing we want to see happen, and and we're going to try to make it happen. But Mass Save should take that calculator and and create their own version of one that combines the the federal information with the Mass Save information. And and I guess I should just back up. The $10,000 uh, rebates from Mass Save, I think are the highest in the country. Um, so uh, those may not be around forever. Um, they're, they're, that's committed in, this, in the plan for Mass Save for 2022 to 2024. So the next year or two is probably the right time to start thinking seriously about heat pumps. It's gonna be difficult for Massachusetts to sustain uh, rebates of $10,000 per year for heat pumps. Um, so I, I think we we need to maybe take advantage of Mass Save now and the Inflation Reduction Act, but then after that, um, we'll see what happens. It's it's too soon to tell where Mass Save is going to go on that. Um, now that question of area median median income, uh, median income in uh, Boston is 133,300, and uh, so 150% of that is almost $200,000. Now we don't know. That's, those are the numbers according to Fannie Mae, which is a housing agency. We don't know if uh, how that's gonna translate into what uh, Massachusetts is gonna use 
uh, to determine your eligibility for those rebates. So just using that as a guideline, uh, but I think we're going to see a lot of information over the next few months. Um, as someone said, uh, the Inflation Reduction Act is a tsunami of money, which is true, but with it will be a tsunami of details, and we're waiting for more of those. So basically, Congress did its part. It passed a bill, but the bill's very complicated, and now it's up to agencies within the federal government to get down to the details, and then it'll be up to the state energy uh, offices to uh, keep going and, and add details that apply to, to our state. Um, now, what's uh, important to know is if you have the opportunity to couple a heat pump with solar energy, the economics get even better. You can have lower op operating costs if you own uh, the means of production of your electricity. Um, and uh, there are, there's a program Massachusetts has for solar called SMART. Uh, these incentives are paid to you yearly based upon your solar production. Uh, there's, you know, there's not a lot of maintenance applied with, uh, for solar, but you can uh, certainly find qualified installers to and, and companies to maintain that. If you own the home, uh, the payback is often uh, in four to six years. Now, the good news again about the Inflation Reduction Act is in addition to the Massachusetts SMART program, uh, they have extended uh, and made the solar energy tax credit uh, something that is going to last for at least another 10 years. It was scheduled to um, wind down and expire, but now we don't have to worry about that. And so we'll have the ability to couple the solar energy uh, tax credit with the um, uh, with the Inflation Reduction Act uh, support and and the and Mass Save uh, and Smart. When you put it all together, um, probably the lowest cost way to uh, have electricity would be solar on your home, and then you know when you use that to either uh, drive a heat pump or an electric car, you're, you're doing even better. All right, quick. Quick question on that former slide. Yep, sure. Uh, looks like there's sort of a partial sentence here on the first bullet, sub-bullet. Um, um, yeah, yeah. The uh, the the tax credit um, is pretty generous. Uh, this is actually a, a bullet that that Lowy Hayes put in that where, where she she suggested that um, leasing um, sometimes you can. Uh, lease the solar panels from a company and um, they will uh, uh, charge, they'll pay you uh, a fee uh, for for leasing your roof, essentially, uh, renting your roof. And they'll sign you up with a power purchase agreement where you'll pay uh, a pretty good price for your electricity. Um, and the risk will essentially be on the production will be on the, the, the company that owns the solar panels. Um, and you're essentially leasing the solar panels and allowing them to use your roof. Um, there is some uh, evidence to say that, you know, that that's appealing because you don't pay anything up front. Uh, however, uh, if you look at it over the life of the system, you're generally better off owning the system. Uh, that's what that right. essentially that, that bullet has to say. And again, there's also uh, low interest or zero interest loans for uh, installing solar in Massachusetts as well. Great, thank you. And uh, we're going to get to this in a second, which is we have a program with Energy Sage, um, which is a company that has a great platform for helping people um, compare quotes on solar. Uh, we've had this one going for a few years, and it's very effective. I wish I had thought of it, to be honest with you. What they do is you can go onto their website, register for free, and put in your address, and they will, within about a day or two, get you uh, seven side-by-side -side quotes from pre-screened installers. And uh, the installers will not have your contact information. They, they actually are prohibited from contacting you until you ask to uh, speak to them. Uh, that's part of the deal. Um, and Energy Sage provides you with independent, knowledgeable advice. Again, uh, they care less about which installer you go with. Um, and what, so it, it's, their program is, probably a format that's similar to what Abode Energy Management's doing with heat pumps. Um, and so we've been involved uh, about almost 20 years ago. We were installed, we were involved in helping people install solar, but we've kind of gotten out of that direct business. And so now we're partnering with Energy Sage and uh, what Energy Sage has proven is that they'll get you a better price um, because of the, their managing competition uh, by doing that. 
and your the the installers that they have are rated in terms of their uh, technical competence and customer satisfaction. Um, and so, if you want to go to um, our website, greenenergyconsumers.org solar, you can learn how to sign up through our, our page and get into Energy Sage. Again, it's not an uh, obligation on your part, uh, but but I, there also will Energy Sage is also there to help you decide whether or not you should um, buy the solar panels yourself or whether or not you should do what's called a power purchase agreement and just uh, buy the electricity from it. Um, here's a testimonial from a gentleman in Rhode Island who said that he liked how they put the installers on a level playing field. Another way to put it is the quotes were apples to apples. Um, he uh, uh, he would, said the energy advisors were extremely uh, helpful, gave him frank answers, and not trying to steer him on one way or the other. So there's a um, uh, a pretty good testimonial. Uh, I know friends and family who've gone through Energy Sage as well, and I uh, found it to be quite helpful. Uh, before I get to the next section about electric cars, can we take a couple questions? Anybody yet? We can take them at the end. Um, someone says we've been getting companies knocking door to door about solar panel installation. It's confusing and I'm skeptical about the deals. And it sounds like Energy Sage is a good way to navigate solar installations. Well, um, I'll tell you this, probably the company that's going door to door uh, in your neighborhood is, well, there's a good chance they're gonna offer you something that's gonna save you money compared to just buying electricity from, uh, 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 from Eversource. However, um, I, I'm convinced that you'll, you, you should make them compete. It's worth your time to sign up for Energy Sage, get competing bids, and then getting the advice um, from, from them uh, as you go. Not a big fan of door-to-door -door salespeople. Um, well, why don't we move on? We can come back to more questions about heat pumps and solar, but now we'll do drive green. Um, um, Larry, another yeah. question about abode energy management. Yeah. It says, are they getting quotes for you, like Energy Sage for solar, or are they getting heat pump bids and then Abode compares them? Ah, good question. What about on the website when you sign up uh, through that page uh, that gets you over to Abode Energy Management, we list uh, heat pump installers. Uh, you would have to the consumer would have to contact the installers to get bids. So it's, it works a little differently than Energy Sage. Um, and then when you get the bids, you can go back to Abode Energy Management for advice on how to compare them. Um, so we list installers uh, that are, are working in Massachusetts. Um, you can figure out which ones uh, appeal to you. Um, there, there's a lot of, um, the heat pump installers have a lot of business right now. And so you might want to start with the ones who are closest to your home. Uh, but the whole, the list of installers for Massachusetts is there for you. And you can call as many as you like. Um, I recommend for anything that's gonna cost the kind of money that we're talking about, which would be 10 or 20 or $30,000 is to get three bids at least. Uh, it may, you, I, you, if you're really patient, you could get more bids, but generally three bids helps you figure out, uh, plus the advice of about energy management helps you figure out what's right for you. Okay, uh, so now we'll talk about electric cars. Uh, our organization is a program we call Drive Green. And um, with an electric car right now, there is a federal tax credit that is uh, still available through December 31st. It's up to $7,500, but it depends upon the battery size of the vehicle and whether or not you have a tax liability of uh, $7,500 or more and also uh, the final assembly uh, location. Here we are, uh, this picture is at one of our events where we show people electric cars. Uh, but the Inflation Reduction Act uh, changed things quite a bit. They have a new tax credit uh, called the Clean Vehicle Credit and it starts January 23rd and beyond. And um, it's complicated. It just, unfortunately, it's very complicated. 
there were cars that uh, Tesla and General Motors were no longer eligible for the tax credit um, before the Inflation Reduction Act because they had sold uh, more than 200,000 cars through the program. Um, uh, you've seen Tesla's all over the place and Chevy has um, the Chevrolet Bolt and the Chevrolet Volt and, and they've each exceeded 200,000. Uh, but now that uh, consideration has been wiped out. Now the tax credit is uh, available to all car makers on some conditions I'll get into in a second, uh, but they're not limited by 200,000 and it's valid for another 10 years, which is important. So we essentially are asking you to think about making your next electric your next car purchase uh, an electric car doesn't have to be this year but you've got uh, quite a few years there are some income requirements uh, in order to receive that joint filers have to have incomes of less than 300,000 individual fi uh, filers for less than $150,000 um, fuel cell vehicles are now included as well for the clean vehicle uh, credit uh, we could get into that at another time I'd recommend that you not get distracted by fuel cell vehicles and you focus on electric vehicles. Um, and there are new vehicle requirements that are worth talking about. It gets complicated. First is the final assembly has to be made in North America. Obviously that means the United States, Canada, and Mexico. Um, that's already in effect, um, but the price cap, there's a new price cap situation. SUVs, pickups, and vans, cannot exceed in uh, purchase price of uh, cannot exceed $80,000. Sedans and hatchbacks cannot exceed a price of $55,000. Those price caps we think are, are good policy. Um, quite frankly, if you can afford a $90,000 vehicle, you probably don't need the $7,500 tax credit. Um, and there are plenty of vehicles coming online in the next couple of years that are within those price caps. That kicks in on January 1st of 2023. What gets more complicated is the battery requirements, the minerals and battery component requirements. Uh, they kick in in 2023 and then they get more stringent. Over time, a higher percentage of the battery components and the uh, the minerals, the things like lithium and cadmium and cobalt and nickel all have to um, have uh, be made uh, in the the United States or in countries that we have free trade agreements with. Um, so it's 40% by value must be mined or processed in North America or, or a country with free trade agreement with the US or recycled in the US. Um, that's starting off in 2023 and it's gonna get more stringent. And if it does meet that requirement, it'll earn a tax credit of $3,750. $3, then the battery must be, uh, the components must be manufactured or assembled in North America um, and at least 50% of the battery value. Sounds very complicated. I know that it's $3,750. What we're waiting for from the federal government is a list of the vehicles that qualify for either the $3,750 or the total of $7,500. So um, that is something as soon as we have that list, um, we will make that available on our website. We have seen some experts speculate on what cars will um, meet those requirements. Um, to be very honest with you, it's gonna be difficult in 2023 finding vehicles that are qualifying for the $7,500 in tax credits, but we're pretty convinced that within a couple of years that, the, that we'll be able to get back to normal or get back to better than normal when a lot of cars will qualify so what's going to happen in the next year or two is that there's a huge uh, amount of money being invested by the car makers to uh, do what they need to to comply with these two conditions. Um, huge amounts of investment to uh, have uh, uh, have some control over where we're getting the minerals and where we're installing, uh, make, making the, the, the batteries happen. Um, so uh, we think that over the next um, the year to, next year or two will be difficult to navigate, but after that, it's going to be a very good time to be purchasing an electric vehicle. Um, then, starting in 2023, used vehicles will qualify. The battery requirements do not apply to a used vehicle. It's $40,000 or 30% of a sales price, whichever is lower. Uh, you must buy the vehicle from a dealership. 
um, and the car must be at least two years old and cost less than $25,000, and it only applies at first resale. That is uh, a federal uh, issue. The um, threshold for income is lower. Um, it's $150,000 for joint filers, $75,000 for individuals. Um, there are also uh, the Massachusetts Climate Bill also suggest, said that we should have a program for used vehicles, um, and we're waiting to see the details for that. Um, also, a big one starting in 2024. Unfortunately, it's delayed uh, a bit, but it's it's delayed because it's going to be complicated for to administer. But it's going to be great in the end. Uh, by 2024, the consumer can choose to transfer the tax credit to the dealership. And so you would, rather than waiting to file your taxes and getting the $7,500 back in your tax return refund, you would see it right on the, um, when you walk into the dealership and get the car. So to put it simply, if the car would normally cost $40,000, the dealer is gonna have to show you that they're making it available for uh, $32,500 and you'd get the $7,500 right off the top. Um, Details are still being determined. Obviously, what that's going to involve is the car dealerships are going to have to uh, sign up some way with uh, the federal or state government to in order to make that happen. Um, but that that's really going to be helpful to a lot of folks who um, want to get the car and and just really can't wait to uh, get the tax refund uh, because uh, cash is tight. So we're excited about that provision. Um, also, Massachusetts. Well, here we go. Uh, Massachusetts right now, it, the climate bill would increase the rebate size from $2,500 for battery electric vehicles up to uh, $3,500, up to $5,000 if you're low and moderate income. Um, and the price cap is for uh, $55,000 um, on, on a vehicle. It would be applied for to new and used cars. Uh, and there are additional rebates for low income drivers and if you're trading in a gas car. They have authorized a point of sale program. Um, I suspect that that probably will wait until the federal program uh, starts up. So if you put it together, what I'm sort of saying here is when the cars meet those requirements on uh, the batteries and the minerals, eventually you'll be able to get uh, over $10,000 in federal and state um, incentives and they will be at the point of sale. Um, and so we think those things will really make uh, the upfront cost of an EV um, uh, within reason for people, it will be more competitive than a gasoline powered car. Um, just real briefly, we know for a fact that electric cars cost far less to maintain. Um, and we also know that um, running a car on electricity uh, costs you less than running a car on gasoline. So if we can get that upfront cost down at near or below what a gasoline powered car uh, would require, then we know that the EV market will take off quite a bit. Uh, so our program, we call it Drive Green. You can go to our website, greenenergyconsumers.org um, slash um, Drive Green, and uh, you can see all the programs, we, all the cars in our program. Um, you can, on the left-hand side, you can sort of choose, do you want a car that's all electric or is it what's called a plug-in hybrid, meaning it's uh, has the capability of running on gas or electricity. Uh, you can choose the mileage, the, the electric range. You can choose uh, the uh, starting MSRP, manufacturer's suggested retail price, and it'll give you a list of the cars uh, that we have. We try to educate you on what your options are. And why don't we stop there and see if there are any questions about uh, that program. Are we good there? Um, um, there's one question. Are they making any progress towards standardizing the charger fittings for electric cars? I understand it can be quite frustrating to be far from home, seek out and find electric vehicle charger, only to find that it does not fit your vehicle. Yes, um, it is getting better. Um, and I think Tesla is rolling out a program where uh, you could buy an adapter that would uh, allow you to to uh, charge your car at a Tesla station if your car was not a Tesla. Uh, we haven't seen that yet. Uh, however, 
Um, what a lot of people don't realize that there are a, there's a, a big investment going on now in building more charging stations all over the United States, including in Massachusetts. Massachusetts in particular are waiting for the Department of Public Utilities to approve a program called Make Ready. Um, it's actually the second uh, round of Make Ready. That's where um, Eversource and National Grid uh, will be uh, helping customers uh, build char public charging stations. They'll, they'll look at, uh, uh, Ken probably is aware of this program, uh, maybe has tapped into it, where um, they'll subsidize the cost of putting a charging station on public property, um, state or local government property, uh, on private property. You might see it at a restaurant or at a, um, at a convenience store. Uh, at workplaces is a great place to, to have it. Um, they incentivize uh, installation at apartments and condominium buildings. Um, and this, this that's uh, tens of millions of dollars will be invested by Eversource over the next three years uh, to do that program. And, and um, you know, we, we can't wait to see the results, but essentially it's going to get easier to charge your car on the road than ever before. Um, in addition to that, um, the federal government is putting a lot of money into the game too. The the um, the, the the infrastructure bill that uh, was signed by President Biden uh, over a year ago has is got a lot of money that is beginning to to flow, and so there'll be grants coming from that program through state government and uh, plus the utility program. So I think we'll be able to see more charging stations than than uh, as as time goes. My my feeling is I think in the next three years, we're gonna see uh, the charging stations uh, will grow in number a little bit faster than the number of EVs that are uh, purchased in Massachusetts, which is uh, probably a good thing. That want, We want people to have confidence that they'll be able to um, uh, charge their car when they're on the road. Larry, if I could just comment, uh, you mentioned the Make Ready program in public chargers and here in the town of Winchester, we are gearing up to install uh, two DC fast charging stations in, a, in the public lot right between uh, Town Hall and the Jenks Center. Um, this is with both the support of the Make Ready program through Eversource and also um, the Mass Department of Environmental Protection Electric Vehicle Incentive Program. And so those should be coming online within the next um, several months and DC fast chargers uh, charge, at least the ones we're going to put in, charge uh, seven times as fast as the typical EV charging stations that you might be accustomed to, which are referred to as level two charging stations. So there's two going in here in Winchester, many more in other towns and, and uh, more than that along, uh, along highways. So as I just want to say, as Larry pointed out, uh, it's going to take a while for some of this money to, to suss out and for some of the EV makers to uh, comply with the new requirements um, for uh, battery components and vehicles to be sourced uh, in the United States or friendly countries. Um, if, if, you, uh, if you can wait, you know, maybe a year, um, if you're thinking about buying a new car, but you can wait a little bit, um, it's going to be a great time to, for you to, to plan for your next vehicle to be an EV because uh, the rebates will be high, your choices will be um, much greater than they are right now, and charging stations along um, in public places, including along highways, will be uh, will be plentiful. And find and one other plug just for the Drive Green program with Green Energy Consumers. I leased a Chevy Bolt uh, in 2017 through the Green Energy Consumers Drive Green program and purchased. The Chevy Bolt in 2021, also through their program. Um, it's a great program. Uh, thank you very much, Ken. Um, I just want to make a comment upon what you're installing. The, the um, what they call DC fast charging is uh, a great benefit to the area. Um, this is how I see it being used in Winchester. Perhaps um, there there are some people who rent, and uh, maybe they don't have the ability to put a charging station at their home. Um, uh, for various reasons, uh, they could go to that station maybe even just once a week um, and get a good charge on their car, um, and that will increase adoption uh, among people who can't easily charge at home. Uh, another one is, uh, for those of you who live in Winchester, you might have guests from out of town who are driving 
200 or 300 miles from their home to your home, and uh, they need to get a good uh, fill up on their charge. Um, and uh, that would be a great way for them to, uh, to find it. Uh, those of us who have electric cars and who have road trips, we have uh, apps on our phone that guide us to where the stations are. And uh, that, that might be something that could take advantage. So what we're trying to do is create an ecosystem essentially where um, you know, if, if, if the, as these things become ubiquitous, um, you know, all over Massachusetts and all over New England and all over the country, that will give people more confidence to get the electric car. Um, so I'll be looking forward to seeing the, the results of your, uh, that installation, Ken. Great. Right. Um, so we'll continue. Uh, now, um, we've talked a lot about uh, electric stuff. Um, you know, it's it's pretty amazing that how important it is now that we stop burning stuff in our homes, uh, so we can have heat pumps, and we can uh, have we can drive uh, cars on electricity. Uh, what a lot of people don't realize is that the grid's already cleaner than people think. It's certainly cleaner than burning um, gasoline or burning a, a you know natural gas in your home or heating oil. Um, and what's interesting about the heat pumps in the electric vehicles is they are far more efficient uh, technologically. Um, they they use the energy that they consume more uh, productively than uh, a heating system in your home or a car does. Um, and but if we can run if we can speed up uh, the process to getting to even cleaner electricity, that's what we want to do. And and uh, so as Ken indicated. Uh, Winchester is a leader. Um, they're one of the communities that has municipal aggregation. Um, and so the uh, default product that um, many of you are probably in, um, that includes 10% more uh, renewable energy than required by state law, um, which 10% doesn't sound like a lot, but the, the state law isn't uh, moving that fast. It's, I think it's 22% clean energy. Uh, um, in in 2022 um, and so you're adding almost 50 percent more more clean energy and that's important but you also have the opportunity to what we call opting up um, you can get up to 100 percent of your electricity uh, in winchester from renewable resources and so you can go to windpowerma.com uh, slash opt up um, and if you don't live in winchester there might be some people here who are on this webinar who are not from winchester you can go to our website, greenenergyconsumers.org, and you can uh, choose a product that we offer that will, um, where we can green up your electricity uh, as an individual or as a business. Um, so what we basically do with the program is uh, we buy renewable energy from projects throughout New England. Uh, New England's one big power pool. All six states uh, contribute to the power pool and you, uh, any generator within the region can serve any consumer in the region, uh, but we try to buy from local projects uh, to serve um, pro uh, consumers in, in uh, Massachusetts and in Winchester. So most of the projects we buy from are on this map are from Massachusetts. So there's a, a large mix of wind, uh, anaerobic digestion in uh, a couple of cases, and um, low impact hydro in, in a couple of cases. Um, and uh, we're looking forward to in the next few years we're hoping to purchase from offshore wind projects um, they're still a couple of years away from being up and running uh, but we're talking to some developers and i think ultimately where this is going to go is a lot of the aggregations will be served eventually by um, projects like what you're seeing on the map in front of you but also um, from offshore wind so what we're trying to do the whole purpose of our organization is to help individuals and consumers uh, and and uh, communities speed up the transition. Uh, we want to get to 100% uh, renewable energy as fast as possible. Um, here's an interesting graph. Um, it's a little bit busy, but basically what it says is that we looked at all the communities that have Eversource uh, as their utility, those that are buying more renewable energy than required by law. Our, pro our organization's involved with um, Roughly a third or a half of the of those of the communities you see listed, um, and so obviously we, we serve Winchester, uh, Arlington, Somerville, Dedham, Brookline, Bedford, and uh, and several more on the list. 
Um, what you can see is that the blue line is shows you how Eversource's prices have fluctuated. Uh, they change every six months according to the way they purchase electricity. Um, and we have seen over the, the last several years that the communities that are doing aggregation have saved um, at least uh, 1.35 cents per kilowatt hour uh, compared to basic service. Uh, that's with uh, additional content of, uh, of somewhere between 5 and 11 percent above the state average. Um, and so Winchester is an example. You're, you're paying a lot less per kilowatt hour than Eversource, and yet you're, um, uh, you're, you're significantly greener. Um, now, this graph only goes out to November of 2022. Uh, pretty soon, we're going to hear what Eversource's price will be uh, for December, and it's not going to be pretty. Um, National Grid just announced that its winter price is going to be 34 cents, which essentially uh, would require us to double this, uh, the scale of this graph. Uh, why is electricity prices by, charged by the utilities so much higher right now? It basically ties back to the war uh, between Russia and Ukraine, caused entirely by Vladimir Putin. And that's causing electricity prices to skyrocket throughout the world, particularly in Europe, Japan, uh, much worse than here. Um, uh, they would love 34 cent electricity in uh, in Europe. It's going to be worse for them in this winter. But the the point it will uh, result in higher prices for Eversource. So community communities such as Winchester are going to be able to essentially ride through uh, all this noise, save a lot of money, and be greener than what Eversource is 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 offering. Um, we looked at what this all means on a statewide basis. Um, what we found was that um, the added renewable energy that aggregation programs are, are having is, uh, if we extrapolated it, if every consumer, residential consumer in Eversource, National Grid, and Unitil, those are the utilities in Massachusetts, it would add uh, uh, up to 1.6 million megawatt hours of clean energy. And that's the equivalent of about four or 500 uh, utility scale wind turbines. Um, and on the savings, we're saving at least 1.3 cents per kilowatt hour. That's on average about $78 per year uh, for clean electricity. This slide actually predates everything I just said about uh, the rising electricity pr prices we're expecting to have this winter. So we're talking about much bigger savings. Um, and if we extrapolated uh, that savings to all residential customers of Eversource, National Grid, and Unitil, it would amount to $208 million per year in statewide savings. Um, so I, this is just a, a congratulations to Winchester for being part of the program and deciding to go through with municipal aggregation. The benefits are there. The point is, uh, as an individual, you're part of something that is larger than yourself. It's, it's something that is community-wide, but then take it another step. What the community is doing, you're not, Winchester is not just virtue signaling here as someone might put it. Winchester is essentially showing other communities the way. You're part of a larger uh, group of communities that are making this happen. And you know, we frankly think the state should be supporting aggregation more than it is. Several communities are bottled up waiting for state approval uh, so that they can do aggregation the way that you folks are. Uh, we wrote a report on uh, called Green Power at Lower Cost. Municipal aggregation is a huge success in Massachusetts. And you can uh, download that off our website, greenenergyconsumers.org uh, slash aggregation. Um, we're almost done. I do want to say that next Monday night, a week from tomorrow, we're having our 40th annual uh, fall meeting. And it's our 40th anniversary. Uh, we're going to have a really fun party at uh, outside to be COVID safe. Uh, it's at a place called the Lawn on D in downtown Boston, over by the uh, World Trade Center. It's from 5 to 7.30. Um, you can go to our website and uh, uh, perhaps Adriana, you could put the registration link uh, into the chat. That would be helpful. And we'll be talking about all the good things that are happening happening in Massachusetts. Um, if you can't attend that event, uh, we hope that you will support us by making a donation. We're a nonprofit organization and you can go to greenenergyconsumers.org uh, 
uh, slash donate. And uh, what you donate to us would be tax deductible. And that is the conclusion. I hope that was helpful. And now we can uh, take more questions. And Larry, as the uh, Adriana pulls up the questions, just to point out a couple of things with our wind power program, as you noted, we're already providing 10% more renewable uh, electricity than required by state law. Um, starting December, we're doubling that to 20% more renewable as part of our default. Um, so, the, and the other thing I wanted to point out is that under our wind power 100 program, where you get 100% of your electricity from renewable sources, the cost of that program uh, today is already lower than uh, the Eversource basic program that you would other, otherwise be on if you weren't in wind power. And that's based on uh, Ever, Eversource's current rates, which as Larry pointed out, uh, are about to go way up starting January. And so if you enroll uh, in wind power 100, you'll already save money off of what most people in the state are paying and you would have paid um, if you weren't as part of wind power. And then you'll be saving uh, even more than that compared to wind power basic um, starting uh, essentially in January and going forward for the next two years. Yeah, Ken, uh, thank you for chiming in. Uh, what we've found is communities that have done aggregation once with buying what we call green municipal aggregation, they're adding more renewable energy. Um, it's usually for a, a contract of about three years, but then when it's time to renew, um, most of the time they come back and they want more. Um, it's like a good meal, you want seconds, but you want, and you want more. Uh, and so Winchester is doing what other communities have done. They've gone from 10 to 20%, uh, but it's, it's true. You could go to 100% in Winchester uh, for the next uh, year and you'd be less than whatever source is uh, just offering uh, what's required by law. It's, it's uh, you got in at the, at the right time, Ken, and everybody in Winchester. Um, so moving on, a few questions. Uh, one person asked, do heat pump uh, installers have to come into your house to provide their bid? Um, uh, yes, they do. Um, and we rec uh, that makes it a little bit time consuming on your part. Um, they can't give you a good price. Every home is different with respect to a heat pump and they would need to uh, come in. What you really wanna push them for is to calculate how much your house would be, is, it's called the heat loss calculation. You want to know uh, they should be able to I, make sure they are able to size the system uh, properly, and they can't do that without visiting your home. Um, the solar installers generally will give a, a preliminary bid um, using uh, Google Earth. They can look down at the roof of your house and 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 size it up pretty good. Uh, but the heat pump um, uh, installers need to go go to your house. Um, the uh, I think I answered the question about uh, uh, charging. Um, one person asked, do, do you need to get a specific kind of charger for your house that matches your car? If you have two different makes of e-car, could you end up needing two different chargers or are there adapters? Actually, for your home, it's not a problem. Uh, you, there are several uh, excellent home charging units you can get. Um, I think we touched on that in our um, on our website, but you can also get good uh, responses from uh, consumer reports. That one there, um, they're fairly uh, universal in terms of what you would need. Whether whether you had a Tesla or a Chevy or a Volkswagen, um, you would be able to uh, charge at home. There's two levels of charging at home. Um, you can actually charge any one of the cars, a Tesla or uh, a Ford or anything with uh, using the power from uh, 110 volts uh, that is available throughout your house. Um, as long as you had an exterior outlet, you can do that. Um, and that charges very slowly, um, it, but you know, it's the average car travels 40 miles a day, actually a little bit less in Massachusetts. So you could, you could generally uh, replace the 30 or 40 miles overnight with a level one charger, um, but uh, what most of us, those of us who have an all electric car, um, usually we get a level two charger, which charges five times faster than a level one charger. And um, that usually costs about $500, $600 to buy. And then you have to pay an electrician to hook it up. Um, but again, um, there'll be incentives for that going forward. Um, and that's generally worth it. Um, 
uh, in order to have that faster charging speed. Um, then uh, Laura uh, asked, if you have wind power 100%, what's the incentive uh, to getting rooftop solar? Uh, I think I'll answer it, then ask Ken to, for his take. I would say you should run the economics of uh, putting rooftop solar, and if it works out to your advantage, um, you should go for it. Um, the, the payback on that might be uh, just a few years, and that's a good investment. Um, you're doing something for green electricity, and uh, you're saving money. Um, so as much as we love it when people enroll in Wind Power 100, you're actually you might get a better deal if your house is suitable. So what 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 makes a house suitable? Um, you need a good, solid, uh, unshaded south-facing roof or southwest-facing. Um, so what that means is, uh, you know, the, the roof doesn't need replacement right away. You know, it's got some years uh, ahead of it um, to justify putting solar panels on top. Um, and you want it to be unshaded. If, For example, in my house, we've got trees that are shading the house. And unfortunately, I can't put solar on, on my property and have it make any sense. So I buy 100% green electricity. Um, and so that's something you, that's, again, what I'd suggest is you talk to the folks at Energy Sage and uh, get some bids and, and see how it works for you. Yeah, and I'll just say that I'm, I'm an example of that calculus uh, myself. I'm currently on Wind Power 100, um, but I went through the Energy Sage portal, the same one that you can get to through the Green Energy Consumers website. Um, got three bids from solar um, providers. Picked one. Uh, I am getting um, a rooftop array that will provide 100% of my electricity needs. Um, it's going to cost. $33,000. I'm going to get about $12,000 of that back in federal and state rebates. Um, and the payback for me is going to be six years. After six years, my electricity will be free. And so I was enrolled in Wind Power 100 when I didn't have solar. And uh, once I have solar, it'll be essentially a moot point because I'll be generating 100% of my electricity from my rooftop uh, power plant. Um, so that's how I did it in my case. It, that's a great example, a good case study right there. Um, Want to give people a little sense of where we're going in the future. Um, in order to reduce greenhouse gas emissions by the amount that science tells us, um, we need to um, get to 50% carbon reduction by 2030, 75% by 2040, and we have to be net zero by 2050. So what that means is, um, you know, literally we, we've got to be all renewable energy by at least by 2050 or sooner. Um, so that means uh, we're going to be heating with heat pumps um, or uh, either air source heat pumps like mini splits or geothermal, uh, something like that. And that will mean uh, we won't have gas or oil or propane combustion in the house. Um, so that the, the heat pumps do require electricity. Um, so that will make our electricity bills go up. Uh, but we're going to that's generally over time is going to be less uh, costly than buying the gas or oil or propane. Then with the electric cars, uh, we eventually have to uh, get away from gasoline powered cars. Massachusetts is going to join California and some other states. Uh, by 2035, if you wanna buy a new car in Massachusetts, it will have to be electric. Um, and actually the, the, the rule that goes in, it will be, um, by even 2030, um, the car makers are going to have to sell at least 68% of their cars will have to be electric. So when you put all this together and you kind of connect the dots, we're going to have more heat pumps, we're going to have more electric cars. Uh, that's going to drive electricity consumption up. Now, some people are going to be able to cover uh, their electricity usage with solar panels on their roof. Some people won't be able to do that. Maybe uh, they'll be able to. Um, for my case, for example, I won't be able to, to, to cover it with solar, uh, but even in many cases, uh, there might be a need to buy uh, green electricity in addition to the solar panel. Maybe the roof can't uh, support all the energy consumption in the home, and so we could combine solar uh, on-site with uh, renewable energy that's produced off-site.
Any other questions? Ken, do you have any questions or any closing comments? Uh, just two quick things. One, just to, to thank you, Larry, uh, and your team and your organization for providing the tremendous value that you do to your members and even to people who just uh, mooch off of your website and show up and, and take advantage of the resources that are there for free. Um, and this was a great webinar as I knew it would be, and I really appreciate you taking the time to do this. And the other thing I'll say to the audience members who are uh, Winchester residents, even if, even if you're not, um, this is day, only day two uh, of Climate Solutions Week in Winchester. We have great events happening for the rest of the week. Um, and just check us out if you go to the uh, winchester.us town website and scroll to the bottom you'll see the climate solutions week um, advertisement click on that and you'll see a rundown of all the events that are happening all week they're all free and they're all great and um, just want to thank everyone for joining us tonight uh, thank you as well everybody one last thing uh, we'll post this it'll also live on youtube so um, that's another link that you could uh, send around Ken at some point. So, oh, great. Um, Thank you. And so we appreciate your support, Ken, and uh, everybody else have a great evening.